Hello again, and uh, welcome to Kimmel Bay Church, and our turning aside to the scriptures for a few moments uh, each day. We're moving towards the wonderful season of Easter now, and we're picking up our text today in the Gospel by Matthew. You remember Matthew, the tax collector who was converted to Christ and uh, became a follower of Jesus? Well, in his gospel that he wrote, we're picking up the text in chapter 22 and verse 23 through to 40, and then moving on to chapter 26, uh, the first five verses. You may like to press your pause button and uh, read those verses before we carry on. Well, welcome back, and uh, let's turn to those verses. We we pick up the story where someone, some crowd of people are trying to pick fault with Jesus. There's always somebody trying to pick fault with Jesus, always somebody trying to criticize the Christian faith. Well, in this case, it was the Sadducees. And the Sadducees were a, a group of people. There was the Sadducees and the Pharisees, as you know, and one or two other groups. And um, I always find it remarkable. I always find it remarkable that the Sadducees, the people who did not believe in the resurrection, they didn't believe in life after death kind of thing, here they are asking a question about marriage in the hereafter. I, now I find that remarkable. But of course, it was all really to try and trap our Lord Jesus, was it? wasn't it? And uh, this, is, was, this was their way of going about it. And uh, Jesus deals with their question as he deals with all the questions that were fired at him during uh, life. He always had the appropriate answer for those who were seeking to trip him up. And uh, his wisdom, his wisdom as the son of God uh, peeks through in all his dealings with individuals as we read the Gospels. If you haven't already or you don't regularly read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, do turn to the Gospels and read them from time to time. Someone gave me that advice many years ago. Trevor, whatever you do, wherever you read in the Scriptures, whatever blessing you get elsewhere in the Scriptures, always come back to the Gospels and read the doings of our Lord Jesus as he was here on earth. Well, Jesus dealt with these Sadducees, and he, he told them they got their priorities wrong. How had they got their priorities wrong? Well, <laughs> he told them that they didn't know the Scriptures. They didn't know the Scriptures. And that's the answer to a lot of folks, misunderstanding or refusal to accept what God says that they don't bother to read and they don't bother to absorb what God says in his word. We need to know the scriptures. It is vital for our Christian lives. And Jesus tells these Sadducees they don't know the scriptures. He tells them that marriage, in a sense, is a thing of the past. There won't be marriage in heaven. Believers in heaven will be a bit like the angels, really. Uh, spiritual beings and angels can no more marry than they can die and dear believing friend who belongs to the Lord Jesus this morning you will never die you will live if you belong to the Lord Jesus there has been a time in your life when you've taken Jesus into your life on board as your savior and life uh, savior and Lord you will never die he will uh, have you in heaven with him. If you've never come to that point in your life, will you seriously consider it? Because your eternal destiny hinges on what you will do here on earth with the Lord Jesus. If you turn away from him, if you reject him, you will go to a lost eternity, a lost eternity which is so, so miserable and so, so sad. 
they then turn their attention to the greatest commandment. They try and uh, goad the Lord Jesus by asking him about the greatest commandment. And um, Jesus tells them, in effect, get those two commandments right that he's going to quote, uh, and you'll have it all right. In a sense, all the rest will follow. Love the Lord your God with all your being, and love your neighbor as yourself. And it's interesting when we reflect on human nature, is it not, that you and I naturally cannot love God properly with all our being, with all our soul and heart and mind. Neither can we love our neighbor totally and fully as ourselves naturally. We need his grace in our life to do that. We need to love, to, in order to love our neighbor, we need the grace of God because it doesn't come naturally to us. Therefore, we fall short. We remember those words of the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans when he says, all have sinned, all have sinned, no exceptions, all have sinned and come short of God's glory, short of the standards that God asks of us. That's why we need salvation. That's why we need saving. I use that old-fashioned word and make no apology for it. We move on to chapter 26 quickly. The first five verses of chapter 26. And I'm going to refer to some of the other verses in the chapter as well. Jesus has finished his teaching ministry, you know, and uh, it comes through in these verses that he is in complete control our Lord Jesus is in complete control. We read in verse 42, if you look further on, may your will be done. Is that your prayer today in your life to God? May your will be done in my life, dear Lord. It's one thing to say it in the Lord's prayer. It's quite another thing to say it and mean it uh, and, and place our lives unreservedly into his nail-pierced hands and say, do what you will with me. May your will be done in my life. Look at verse 18. And will you note that his appointed time has come. The time has come ordained by God, uh, obediently moved towards by the Lord Jesus when he will go to the cross. He will go to the cross for you and for me to pay the price for our sin. Well, might we say with the hymn writer, Hallelujah, what a saviour. Goodbye, the Lord bless you.